Namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic. In this video, we are going to discuss on hyperviscosity of semen or hyperviscous semen. So, a sample is said to have, you know, hyperviscosity, you know, if, you know, if you look at the image on the right, if the sample, you know, is dropped from a particular height, you know, with a pasture pipet or with a pipet into a beaker, if it forms a long thread-like structure and if the sample does not fall drop by drop, the sample is said to be technically hyperviscous in nature. So we report, you know, when we do a semen analysis, we report on viscosity and uh, the importance of viscosity is that if a man ejaculates and collects his and collects semen and if he finds that his semen is hyperviscous in nature, basically what happens is sperm, sperm progressive motility or the motility of sperm in that particular sample is, can be impaired because uh, a, the sperm sample cannot you know technically swim through a swim through a semen that is very very thick in nature the sperm is present in the semen if the semen is very thick there's going to be a lot of fluid resistance and the sperm motility is going to be generally low generally low especially the sperm progressive motility so basically what happens is with respect to hyperviscous semen uh, you know, in subfertility may be seen, although we really do not know the exact link between hyperviscous semen and male infertility. What we do know is both of them are, in, are you know, in some way associated with one another. So uh, the other difficulty or other challenge that we see in patients who have hyperviscous semen is that if the semen is hyperviscous, there are problems in, you know, semen sample preparation for treatments like IUI. So, you know, what we basically do in an IUI cycle is we separate the sperm from the semen. We separate the motile sperm fraction from the semen using techniques like density gradient centrifugation, swim-up method, pellet and swim-up method, etc, etc. A hyperviscous semen sample presents numerous challenges because the sperms cannot swim out of semen into the culture media that is used for separating it. So basically what happens, our IUI treatment rates and success rates basically go down. So if a person produces a semen sample and if the semen sample shows repeatedly, so multiple samples that, uh, that an individual producer show hyperviscosity, then we have to treat the hyperviscosity. Now there are different treatment strategies for hyperviscous uh, sperm or semen and again it usually treatment strategies largely revolve around lifestyle changes and you know uh, hydration techniques. But not just that. Uh, people have tried different types of you know uh, medical therapy for you know hyperviscous semen but the medical therapy for hyperviscous semen usually does not really work in some instances what we have seen is that hyperviscous semen is seen along with delayed liquefaction so the semen will not liquefy it will also be viscous in these instances there is a clear-cut association between sperm motility that is very very which, which is which is usually very low along with these two problems. So what basically happens is if you find an individual with male subfertility or male infertility, he gives a semen sample. If there's delay liquefaction in the sample and if there's hyperviscosity, most probably, most likely, we will also detect that the sperm motility in that sample is most probably likely to be very, very low. And in these patients, definitely, you know, fathering, the, fathering a child in the first year of marriage is usually going to be quite difficult and hard. So we must treat both the factors. Now the viscous nature of semen is primarily primarily because of the secretions of the male accessory sex glands which are nothing but the seminal vesicles and uh, if there's an imbalance in the secretion of the male accessory sex glands basically what's going to happen the semen is going to be hyperviscous so basically what we do is in individuals who have you know hyperviscosity of semen or delay liquefaction problems in the semen we basically do test we do specialized tests to assess male accessory gland function we also look at their male sex hormones then we put them on you know a fitness regime then we change their food habits we change their fluid intake status i mean their fluid hydration status and we do we also give a few medica medications you know which may which uh, supplemental medications which may help improve the you know overall consistency of the uh, semen you know by altering the secretion of the accessory glands so um, there are some treatment strategies which we have used in the past to successfully treat some treat men who are producing hyperviscous sperm samples so I hope you found this video quite informative and please share this video with all your friends and loved ones. Please do like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you soon with many more videos. This is Dr. Shah. Welcome and Namaste. Yeah.